God and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. we entreat you all hurtful things and give us those things which are profitable for us through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever 
for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. You can find it in your bulletin or on page 794 in the Book of Common Prayer. You will read it responsibly by half the verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journey <clears throat> and my resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But Thank you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me, behind and before. And you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you, because I am marvelously made. Your works so are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. For I was made in the old depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs. Yet unfinished in the womb, all of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when it was yet after we started them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my large sand would need to be like yours. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as the Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out in the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that we may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven by despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to, de to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, 
Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. What comes first, the rules of the faith? What comes first? What serves what? The rules of the faith. What serves what? And believe me, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of rules and believe in rules and we need them and they avoid chaos and they help us to work together and not to cross boundaries. They're there for a reason, and a very good reason, but we also need to remember priorities. And that's what Jesus calls us to in this gospel and the priorities and it's after all that ultimately the rules are for the benefit of the faith not the faith for the benefit of the rules and just first things first and and sometimes it may mean bending a rule in order to fulfill the faith and that's what Jesus does I mean he's healing on the Sabbath and in that context where work is prohibited but yet there are exceptions, and he will point that out to people at times. Like, well, we're not supposed to do work on the Sabbath, and I agree with that, but what, what farmer, what cattle owner, if, they're, you know, if their cow is stuck in a ditch, are they going to leave it there till the next day? No, they're not. In other words, there's, there's a rule, and then there's an appropriate exception to the rule. And it's ultimately, though, for the sake of healing and health, not for the sake of obeying the rule. And, and again, that's, that's what we see in, uh, in the, whatever, David and his, his men, and they're starving, and so they go into the temple and they eat the, the holy bread, the bread of the presence. Big, big flaw. You don't do that. That's not what's allowed. But yet they're starving. They're starving. So in that case and in that situation, they make an exception because ultimately they're there for worshiping God, for celebrating life, for doing what they're supposed to do. So there is a time and a place. And we, we approach those exceptions carefully to make sure not in a, uh, whatever, in a selfish way, in a self-serving way. I think that's one of the great rules of thumb is who, so who's benefiting by this? If it's just me benefiting from it, I'm kind of suspicious of that. But if it's for a larger good, I mean, I like to say, uh, I, I really try to be an honest person. I believe in the truth, not lies. I, I, I'm very suspicious of people who lie, okay? Of, of whatever ill they may be. But there's a time. I mean, if, if say, this is a, a World War II Nazi Germany and I have three families of Jews hiding in my attic and the Gestapo comes to my door and asks, have you seen any Jews lately? The honest answer would be, oh yeah, I've got six of them hiding in my attic right now. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Lie through my teeth and say, oh no, officer, I'm not seeing any Jews. But, but that's a rare exception, but it's an exception that can be made, should be made. You don't, you don't, you don't go get them. You know, no, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do that. So it's just to say, to remember our ultimate priorities. And the ultimate priority is that of faith, is that of living a faith that shows the love of God. And 99 and three quarters percent of the time, that's going to mean following these rules that are there for very good reasons. But the rule is not what we worship. God is who we worship. Faith is what we follow. And that's a, 
that's an important balance to remember. I mean, whatever. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. probably did break some laws along the way. This demonstration, you don't have a, a permit for it. Well, no, but <laughs> we're having this demonstration anyway. Okay, there's a consequence to that. But it was a choice. Okay, we know we are participating in civil disobedience, but we are serving a cause that's even more important. And frankly, if we wait till we get a parade permit, that parade permit may never come. So we're just going to have to break the darn rule. And if we get arrested, we get arrested. But we are having our demonstration today. So, I mean, there's a time and a place. I mean, that's a lot easier to justify than me. Well, I'm really in a hurry to get home, so I think I'll drive 70 into 55 instead of 58 or 9 into 55. So, no, that's, that's a different kind of breaking the rule. That's just me being impatient of, you know, whatever, getting into trouble. So, so just to say, faith comes first, God comes first, and that's who we worship and why we worship. And so there are times, there are times. Um, and in a way, that's very appropriate for where we find ourselves today in this, uh, what I like to say is sort of the, the second beginning of the church year. I mean, we've had the first beginning in Advent, if you will, uh, for all the seasons, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and we've done those, and they all have their own very important themes, and now we're out into the green season. It's green. We're in prayer A. Things are a little more simple, and it's ordinary time, but we can consider, well, how do we find God, and how do we find faith in ordinary time? Because that's where we spend most of our lives is in ordinary time. We have our mountaintop moments, but then we come down from the mountaintop into the valley of everyday life. And that's how that works. And even if you remember the story, Jesus at the transfiguration and that this wonderful God moment with his closest disciples and his, his garments are white and glistening and, and the voice of heaven, and this is my son, and the disciples are bowled over, but in a matter of what is probably an hour or minutes at least, they're going to be down from that mountaintop, and he's once again going to be dealing with the everyday demands of his time and concerns for his help that, that happen all the time. And that's his ministry, and that's what he's there for. But just to say that moment of transcendence is going to be quickly followed by much more of ordinary time, even for our Lord and what he will face and what he will, he will encounter. And it's that way for us, too. So we may have moments of great joy and moments that, that kind of reset our direction, that help us to know God present in dramatic ways. But then we kind of have to take it into retail, the every day of the demands we face, the work we do, the people we deal with, the opportunities we face. And, and that may seem mundane, but it's also beautiful. That's what our spirituality is rooted in, it's sort of the extraordinary in the ordinary. And we have very ordinary context. I mean, whatever. Uh, today we'll have communion with bread and wine. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, gourmet wine. I remember one time uh, a wedding, the, the couple ordered this really pricey wine. Okay, we can do that, but we don't have to do that. It can just be good old grocery store wine or work the same. Just ordinary bread. And the water can be good old Mount Sterling tap water. It doesn't have to be, you know, from the River Jordan or some special, you know, creek water or something. It's, it's just water. It's water. It's bread. It's wine. But out of these ordinary elements, we find God present through the prayers and the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's just a reminder that it's in our ordinary time, our ordinary doings, that that's where God shows up time after time after time. And as we begin what liturgically at least we can describe as a new chapter, we can reflect on the new chapters in our own lives. And if you think about it, in Jesus's life, every new chapter begins with the love of God. I mean, before the incarnation, before the coming of the eternal Son himself into the world, before the birth of Jesus, we read in the Gospel of John, that God so loved the world that God sends God's Son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world, that 
that people may have salvation in him. In other words, in the incarnation, before the beginning of Jesus' mortal life and ministry, because fully human, fully divine, he comes because of love. He comes because of love. At the beginning of his earthly ministry, his public ministry, again, at the time he's baptized in the River Jordan, the Holy Spirit comes down in the form of a dove, and the voice from heaven is heard, this is my son, you know, with whom I am well pleased, and my beloved son. So again, a reminder that he is loved by God, and as he begins that ministry, he begins it in love. And that's so important for each of us, it seems to me, that when we begin a new life, a new vocation, a new chapter, a new ministry, we begin it in love. I mean, you can almost ask yourself, I mean, what's the motive for this? And we all have all kinds of motives going on at any time. But that the deeper you go, I hope, the closer you get to the love of God. And ultimately, this, I mean, it helps me to, to uh, protect and pay for what my family needs, or it helps me to, to serve in a way that I've been given to do, but that you keep going down deeper and deeper and deeper, and that ultimately what you find is the love of God. But that's why we're doing what we do. That's why we say what we say. That's why we show up when we show up. It's ultimately our expression of God's love in us and our love for God. And just as in the beginning of Jesus' ministry and just in his invitation of disciples to follow him and his healings and his teachings and all of that, it ultimately goes back to the love of God. In other words, none of these things for the sake of themselves. I mean, the, the vestments, the music, the beautiful building and all this, they're great, but they're not for their own sake. We're not here for a pretty building. We're not here for pretty vestments or pretty music or pretty garden. I love all those things, but because they point us to something more, which is the life and love of God in us. And that's why we do it. That's why we have a budget that we work through and we have all these responsibilities, but it's not for the sake of the things themselves, it's for the sake of the life and love of God. And I believe and hope and pray that that carries over into the rest of our lives as well. Whether we're <laughs> taking care of the cat or putting out the trash or signing the checks that need to be paid at the end of the month, but ultimately, ultimately, we're being responsible. We're living up to the calling that's been given to us, and we're not letting anything stop, not letting anything stop us from that responsibility we've been given, that calling that we've been given, because we know where it all began, and that, that where it all began takes precedence over everything else, and it all begins in the life and love. Of God. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from the God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the
people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That they all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. And may we be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Let light perpetual, whoops, <laughs> give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for Jim, Kathy, Jan, Aaron, Norm, Marge, Sally, and Ellen. We also remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad. We celebrate the birthdays of Kim Young and Graham Priest and the anniversary of Ann and R.J. Ratliff. I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, the Anglican Communion the Most Reverend and Right Honorable Justin Welby, 105th Archbishop of Canterbury, Lambeth Conference, Primates of the Anglican Communion and Anglican Consultative Council. Today in the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Bishop, Clergy and Laity of the Anglican Church of Central America. I invite your own prayers and thanksgivings silently or aloud. Almighty and most merciful God, grant that by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, we may be enlightened and strengthened for your service through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, for by what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share his name. and a good answer. 
joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in the infinite love you made us to yourself, and when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.